And I want to get right to Dr. Edwin Lyman, the director of nuclear power safety for the Union of Concerned Scientists. So welcome, doctor. Thank you in advance for sharing your time and your expertise. If you could, please start with what worries you most about the current situation in Ukraine. What worries me most is the possibility that the military skirmishes that are going around uh, the Zaporizhia nuclear plant evolve into a full-fledged military assault where uh, both sides uh, do not exercise any restraint. Because the potential is that um, a sustained military assault could damage enough safety equipment to lead to the meltdown of one or more of the reactors at the site. And that really should be prevented at all costs. That does sound like a worst case scenario. On a scale of one to 10, how likely is it that that worst case scenario can be avoided based on what you know now? I'd say uh, the chances of, of preventing something are high, uh, but if, uh, if the various parties don't do what they need to do, don't cool the situation down, don't comply with uh, international requests to establish a demil demilitarized zone around the plant, then I think the chance is high that there'll be some damage at the plant that will be very difficult to mitigate and could lead to a disaster. Dr. Lerman, in speaking, continuing on this theme of the worst case scenario, some nuclear experts are cautioning against a direct comparison to the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in 1986. So what is different in this case? Well, the main thing that's different is the design of the reactor. So Chernobyl uh, was um, a unique design and it had unique vulnerabilities that contributed to the severity of the accident and the prolonged radiation release. Uh, so the uh, reactors at Zaporizhia are a more modern design. They're more similar to Western style uh, light water reactors, but they still have their vulnerabilities. And in, under the wrong circumstances, you could see a severe radiological release, certainly as large as what occurred at the Fukushima plant in Japan 2011, but potentially larger depending on the extent of the damage uh, to the infrastructure at, at Zaporizhia and the ability of operators to respond to try to mitigate that damage. So you heard our reporting, no doubt, about the anti-radiation medication that's being prepared, as well as nuclear fallout drills held by Ukrainian officials. What else can citizens do to prepare? I do think that it, it has reached the point where uh, you have to worry about those possibilities and uh, preparing the population is better than nothing. Um, but certainly the uh, lot more could be done on the part of the two warring parties. Uh, so one of the vulnerabilities of this plan is if it loses all electrical power. So there has to be an, uh, uh, efforts to ensure that if electricity is lost to the plant, that the backup power is adequate to continue to provide cooling to the radioactive fuel on the site. And that means ensuring that there are adequate supplies of diesel fuel for the backup generators and other equipment. Uh, I think that's very important. Also, there needs to be uh, re uh, reinforcements to make sure that the personnel at the site are are well rested, are uh, not under duress, and so they can do their jobs without the kind of stress that they have been under. Speaking of growing calls from the international community, there's the UN calling for an IEA or an IAEA mission uh, to basically address this issue at the nuclear facility, according to the French readout of a call between President Macron and Russian President Putin. Putin did agree to an inspection. So if that's true, what role could the IAEA serve? The IAEA has very limited authority and resources to intervene, they, although in, under special circumstances, they have participated in activities in uh, war zones. Uh, this uh, is unique and not really the normal way they operate. So, um, and, and again, they don't have any real authority uh, to tell uh, anyone how to run the plant. All they can do is observe the situation to report back, uh, hopefully, what they see and what their recommendations are will get the international community to take uh, stronger action uh, to address uh, these problems and to put pressure 
on the Ukrainians uh, and the Russians. Dr. Edwin Lyman, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.